Questions number four and five from section 2.1 both ask, um, is the triangle with the vertices given a right triangle? There are a couple ways to do this, but since the last problems involved using the distance formula, we're going to use a distance formula for this one. As you can see, I have gone ahead and sketched the points A, B, and C that were given and drew line segments connecting them so you can see the triangle. The question for us, is this triangle a right triangle? To solve this, we want to find the distances from A to B, from B to C, and from A to C. Once we find those distances, we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem to determine if the distances, the shorter distances squared equals the longer distance squared. I'm going to pause it and uh, work through finding the three distances. The first distance I want to find is the distance from point A to point B. I plugged in the values into the distance formula and I found that the distance between those is the square root of 58. It's not necessary in this example to try to simplify any radicals, so just leave them if it doesn't work out to be a perfect square. Now we're going to find the distance from B to C. When you find the distance from B to C by plugging it into the formula and simplifying, you get the distance from this point B to this point C is the square root of 232. Now we're going to find the distance from point A to point C using the distance formula. By plugging in the values into the distance formula, we find that the distance between A and C is the square root of 290. Now what we need to do is take these three distances and apply them to the Pythagorean theorem, making sure that we use the longest distance for our hypotenuse. So here we have this triangle and it appears that the two smallest sides are the side AB and the side BC. So that would make the hypotenuse, if they're a right triangle, would be AC. And remember the Pythagorean theorem is if, if A and B, or let's say X and Y, X squared plus Y squared is equal to Z squared. If A, X and Y are the sides of the right triangle, or the legs of the right triangle, and Z is the hypotenuse, then if this is a right triangle, we can apply the Pythagorean theorem. Let's plug in our given values for X, Y, square root of 232, and Z. When you simplify this equation, we get 58 plus 232. If that equals exactly 290, we know that this triangle is a right triangle. And 58 plus 290 does give us um, 300 and... I'm sorry, I did that wrong. <laughs> Let's do that. Alright, 58 plus 232 does give us 290. So we can say the answer to this question is yes. This is a right triangle because the two smaller legs, when you square them and add the result, that's going to equal the longer leg, I'm sorry, the hypotenuse squared. And this ends up working true. If when you do this another time, you find that the distances squared does not equal the hypotenuse squared, then it is not a right triangle. Let's check our answer. Excellent. Okay. Number five is a similar question, so rather than take time to work through that, go through, find the three distances, apply the Pythagorean theorem. If the equation is true, we can say yes, it's a right triangle. If it's not true, we say no, it's not a right triangle. So here I have calculated the distances for question number five, where I was given the points A, B, and C with coordinates 6, 3, 0, 6, and negative 5, negative 1. I went ahead and used the distance formula and just have my simplified answers given here. 
To see if this is a right triangle, I'm going to use a Pythagorean theorem using the two shortest distances as the legs and the longest distance as the hypotenuse. If these distances squared equals this distance squared, then it's a right triangle. So if you see, I, I plugged it in to um, x squared plus y squared equals z squared, and I get, um, when you simplify this, I get 45 squared, square root of 45 squared is 45, plus 74. Notice that that does not equal 137. So we say this is not a right triangle. If it were a right triangle, that has to equal exactly the um, hypotenuse squared. So the answer to our question here is no. Check your answer. Now, don't try to cheat yourself out of doing these by just guessing, because when you take this on, do, have a question like this on your test, you get one shot. You don't get as many shots as you get on the homework. So take the time and find the three distances to make sure that it is indeed a right triangle. Now the next question, six and seven, are similar, but instead they're asking if the points are collinear. Collinear simply means that they are on the same line. Now you can do this problem using the slopes, but you can also do this using the distance formula, and that's the method I'm going to use for this one. For question number six, again, we're asked to find out if these three points are collinear. I've labeled the points and I've sketched them on a quick little graph here, and it looks like they are collinear. It looks like they are on a straight line, but it's hard to tell based just on this rough sketch. So I'm going to find three distances again, one distance from A to B, I'm going to call it X, distance from A, I'm sorry, A to C, I'm going to call it X, the distance from A to B, I'm going to call it Y, and then the distance from B all the way to C, I'm going to call that distance Z. And this distance all the way from here to here, that would be your distance C. If these points are collinear, then distance X plus distance Y has to equal distance Z. I'm going to go ahead and use the distance formula to find the distance from A to C, the distance from A to B, and then finally the distance from B to C. And when you're doing this, you want X and Y to be the two, two shortest distances and Z to be the longest distance. So I've applied the distance formula. I found that the distance from A to C is the square root of 20. I found the distance from A to B is the square root of 34. And I found the distance from B to C was the square root of 106. If these points are collinear, then the, dis the two shorter distances are going to add up to exactly the longer distance. And to check to see if this is correct, I'm going to use a calculator. Because I want to know if the square root of 20 plus the square root of 34, if that equals the square root of 106. Now with a calculator, a scientific or a graphing calculator, what I've done is I've, I've found the value of square root of 20 plus the square root of 34 and found that that value is 10.3. So these two shorter distances added together is 10.303 and the longer distance is only 10.29. This is not equal. It has to be exactly equal in order for the points to be collinear. So we say that these are not collinear. And let's check your answer. Fantastic. Now question number seven is a lot like the one we just did. Find the three distances. Take the two shortest distances, add those together, and that should equal exactly the longest distance. Use a calculator to confirm. I use the distance formula 
to find the distance from A to B, I've labeled the three points A, B, and C. The first distance from A to B I found to be the square root of 45. The distance from A to C I found to be the square root of 20. And then the distance from B to C I found to be the square root of 125. If the two shorter distances add up to exactly the longest distance, then I know that these points are collinear. So we want to find the square root of 45 plus the square root of 20. If this is equal to exactly the square root of 125, we can say that the points are collinear. Let's check it with a calculator. On the graphing calculator, I find the square root of 45 plus the square root of 20. Oops. And that value is a decimal. And then I want to find square root of 125. And I get exactly the same thing. So I know that these points are collinear. Yes. Check the answer. Fantastic. So again, with these problems, the key was using the distance formula. If you wanted to find out if it's a right triangle, use the Pythagorean theorem. The shorter distance is squared must add up to the longer distance squared. The, to determine if the points are collinear, the two shorter distances must add up to the longer distance.